guys are ever wondering why I straighten my hair for every video, this is why. Hey friends, it's Ren, and today I'm going to be doing my June wrap up. I said July about 50 times in previous takes, so I'm really glad I got it this time. So in the month of June, I read 11 books, which is way more than I thought it was. June felt like the longest month that's ever existed. But again, did manage to read 11 books this month. Not sure how, but let's go into it. I've decided to do kind of a different setup for this. So I, instead of doing it chronologically like I normally do, I'm going to be doing it by star rating. I'm gonna start with five stars and then go down, down, down. I don't have any one stars this month, but I do have a two star, so that's what I'm gonna be going with. We only had one five star this month, and that was Maurice, or Morris, if you're English apparently, uh, by Ian Forster. This is about a man, Morris, who is extremely plain. He's boring. He is a stockbroker, if that tells you anything. <laughs> He's just, you know, very prototypical Englishman. Kind of a snob, upper middle class. The thing that sets him apart, though, is that he is gay. That is the basis of this novel and boy was it done brilliantly. Everyone kept saying that I needed to read this um, and I just kind of ignored it for a while and I'm really glad that I finally actually read it because who boy. The beginning of it was a little rough for me just because Morris is so boring. Uh, he's just like really not an interesting character until he starts having to grapple with who he is and who he loves and that just takes it to a whole other level. I just thought it was done so brilliantly that such a mundane thing such as love, um, which love itself isn't mundane, but like the fact that it happens every day, people fall in and out of love, um, it just takes it to the next level. The contrast of him being so boring and love being what sets him apart, because like I said in my Goodreads review, which you can read, I have my Goodreads down below, but like I said in my Goodreads review, if this was just a man falling in love with a woman, it would fall into the realm of like a bajillion other stories, especially, you know, 19, it was written in 1913 and 1914. But if it had been released then and it was just a love story between a man and a woman, even though Forster is a really good writer, it might not have become so famous and talked about, at least within my academic circles. So I just thought it was a brilliant novel, brilliantly written. I'm very excited to read more of Forster's work. The first four star read that I read was The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. This book, I'll just tell you what it's about. The Bell Jar is about a girl named Esther who is pretty enough, you know, well liked. She's very talented. She's clearly going places according to her mentors and the people around her. But unfortunately, she develops depression slash some sort of mental disorder that I don't feel qualified to uh, diagnose her with. And her life starts to slowly spiral from there. This book was very intense in so many different ways. I literally almost had a panic attack while reading it. That has never happened to me while well, I've read a book before, but this book deals with depression in a very real way, a very raw way. It is honestly the best depiction of sort of depressive thinking and suicidal ideation that I've ever read in my life. Um, so if you can't handle that, maybe don't read it. Actually, I would say probably don't read it and wait until you're in a better place because it definitely takes it to the next level. Plath's writing was just off the charts and it makes sense that this was so poignant and like effective because it is supposed to be semi-autobiographical. Sylvia Plath is essentially writing about her own experiences and her own feelings in her own life but putting a different name on it, maybe putting herself in different situations. So it makes sense that it was like that but still blew me out of the water. Very good. I didn't rate it five stars because it's not like gonna be an all-time favorite, but the read was extremely impactful. I don't know if that makes sense. Usually I reserve five stars for books that are like gonna be the top of my charts um, forever for the rest of my life. Like I will read and reread them. The Bell Jar was like that for me, but I can acknowledge the fact that it was like brilliantly written, just brilliantly written. It is very triggering, as I told you, so keep that in mind if you wanna read it, but oh God, it was so excellent. <laughs> the next four star that I read was The Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead. 
You guys may remember when I read The Nickel Boys. I can't remember what month it was. Maybe April. And I absolutely loved it. I gave it five stars. This one I did give four stars and I didn't like it as much as the last one. I'll get into why. This is about a slave named Cora and her life under slavery as well as her life attempting to escape and it follows her as she goes through the Underground Railroad, which in this is an actual railroad. My favorite aspect of this book is the way that it dealt with morality. I felt like it's captured the nuance a lot better than a lot of slave narratives. Um, you kind of see like the same story replicated, um, especially by white filmmakers. Colson Whitehead is a black man, so probably helps, but I feel like it dealt with things more realistically than a lot of things do. I liked that he dealt with what is more important, you know, a few people get out or we all stay together, um, because the reality is the more people that you have, the less likely you are to get out, the more likely you are to get caught. It deals with morality in that way and how slaves had to kind of not think about those things as much because they were literally on the run for their lives. So I felt like it dealt with that really well. I also felt like it dealt with the white man very well. I know a lot of <laughs> slave narratives tend to do there's a bad white man and then a good white man. It is a lot more complicated than that. Morality is a lot more complicated than that. There is a couple that does right by Cora, um, but they're not like good people. They're not doing it because they're righteous and like on the side of truth and freedom and all that. Um, they're just doing it because of their own reasons, which I won't spoil, but it's just, it just dealt with it in a really realistic way. Like, I don't even think there were I guess there were a couple like good white people, but I feel like it was a lot more complicated than that in real life and in this novel. So I really appreciated that. My biggest issue with this novel was that it is kind of like, it's similar to the Nickel Boys and I preferred this style in the Nickel Boys. I don't know if this is just Colson Whitehead style, but this is what I got from it, is that he writes in a very sort of, very clinical is the word that I'm looking for. It's a very clinical way of writing that doesn't, invoke a lot of emotions. The other thing, I thought the pacing was weird. I felt, someone used the word jerky in a Goodreads review that I read and I 100% agree with that. The pacing was weird, but again, still gave it four stars. Still thought it was a very worthwhile read. So pick it up if you'd like to. For the last of the four stars, I have The Black Flamingo by Dean Atta. This is about a boy named Michael as he grows up. I think it starts from the time he's like four. So it goes on for a while. Um, but it follows him through his schooling and then on to college as he starts to accept himself, accept his sexual identity, accept, yeah, just himself and what he likes. I feel like people made a way bigger deal of like the drag aspect of this, but it's not that big of a thing, I would say. Like it definitely is there, but it's not until towards the end. So if you're looking to pick up a drag book, maybe not this but it is very good i did read this in one sitting it is a novel told in verse so that definitely helps but i just i just thought it was really fluid it really made use of the verse format to me it didn't feel gimmicky it felt like it worked this was very emotionally poignant i don't have a ton to say about it like it was just very simply good i probably don't have a ton to say about it because it was written in verse i just think that it dealt with race very well. It dealt with sexuality very well. Some of the stuff that was said in it I've not read in any other book, so I think it's definitely worth reading. It's a great YA. It kind of didn't feel like I was reading YA. I love that in a YA contemporary, so I was very happy, but yes, pick it up if you want. I know Pride Month is over now, but if you want another Pride-related read, this is a great one. Next, we are getting into the three-star reads, and the first three-star read that I have is all the Stars and Teeth by Adeline Grace. This book is about a queen named Amora who has to do a sort of blood, bone, flesh type ritual, but something goes awry and she has to flee the kingdom and then try to save her kingdom. That was probably the worst description I've given so far, but I really don't remember this book that well. <laughs> this book was fun. Like, it was just fun. It was a romp. I think I described it in my Goodreads review. Like, it was just a really good time. This is what I kind of hoped the daughter of the Pirate King would be like. I gave it three stars for a reason. I enjoyed reading it. I listened to some of the audiobook and that was good as well. I liked the romance well enough. I liked the characters well enough. I liked that there was a mermaid. We always fuck with mermaids in this house. The thing that I was upset about though is for some reason, I thought that this was a sapphic romance. It was not. It is straight as can be. 
literally as straight as can be. So that was kind of a disappointment to me, but what are you gonna do? They can't all be gay, unfortunately in a perfect world, but we're not there yet. The next three star that I read was a graphic novel called Laura Dean is Breaking Up With Me by Mariko Tamaki and Rosemary Valero O'Connell. I was not gonna remember both of those names, so thank you for letting me read that. So this book is about a girl named Freddie who is in a toxic relationship with a girl named Laura Dean, and it was good. I liked that it dealt with like toxic relationships in Especially like lesbian slash, I don't know, I don't know how they identify, like sapphic, women loving women type stories. Um, I did think it kind of tried to tackle too much with a certain other aspect. Once I got to the end, I was like, what is happening? Um, but I thought it was good. I know a lot of people were disappointed by this. I wasn't disappointed. It was about on par with what I was expecting. I generally don't expect a lot of like emotional poignancy from my graphic novels, so there's that. Um, I could have just had low expectations, but I did think it was good. I liked the representation of a toxic sapphic relationship, so it gets points from me for that. The next book that I read, I did not rate it on Goodreads, but based on my rating system, it got a three star, which I don't really know how that happened, but it got a three star. And that is Tampa by, oh God, what's her name? Alyssa Nutting. So, this book. It felt like a fever dream, to be honest with you. I read it until like 4 a.m. one night because I was just floored by what I was reading. I should just tell you what it's about. It's about a, um, a school teacher, a middle school teacher who is a pedophile and it is a female school teacher and she only is attracted to 13 and 14 year old boys and once they like start going through puberty, she's no longer attracted to them. This novel, if it wasn't so short, I probably wouldn't have gotten through it. It is extremely explicit. I don't recommend it, is the thing about it. Um, I think that a lot of the explicit aspects of it, it just made me uncomfortable. And I know that's kind of the point, but at the same time, I think that when it comes to children, it's not great to have explicit sex scenes. Like, it's, it's, I am finding it very difficult to talk about this book because she gets into a relationship with a 13 or 14 year old boy and they describe their relations in vivid detail and I get it, I get why it was done. Like, artistically I understand the book, but reading it was not a great experience. I will say, I liked that it tackled the issue of women kind of getting away with things, especially beautiful because the main character is extremely beautiful and it's like everybody always wants to date her. So it dealt with like the way that beautiful women are kind of not treated the same under the law and how, and she's white. So beautiful white women uh, not treated the same under the law. People don't expect things from her because she's so beautiful and so white and so young. Cause she is a complete monster. Like I don't think there is a single redeemable quality. She's like cartoonishly monstrous, but yeah, I don't know if I can recommend this. It was a weird experience. I, again, read it in like a fever dream because I just like, it's one of those things where it's a train wreck and you just can't stop reading. That's what I experienced while reading this book. So that gives you any indication. Moving on. So after that, I needed a palate cleanser. So I read The Darkest Part of the Forest by Holly Black. This book was pleasant enough. If you don't know, it's set in like the realm of the Folk of the Air trilogy. So The Cruel Prince, The Wicked King such and such and such. This is about a town where the fairies are kind of just accepted um, as part of it and people go missing, but the townsfolk are like, you must have been fucking around because otherwise they wouldn't have taken you. <laughs> it follows this girl Hazel and her brother Ben. It's about those two and there is this horned boy that is asleep in like a glass coffin that lives in the woods and they've been there as long as Hazel and Ben have lived there. But then one day he's gone and it goes from there. <laughs> this was just a really fun read. I was surprised by how much I liked it. I know I gave it three stars, but it's like a high three stars. I really, really enjoyed it. And I thought that this was a good addition to the whole Folk of the Air series. I really like fantasies where supernatural elements are kind of just accepted by humans, not necessarily like, a sort of D&D &D realm where there are humans living among 
you know, all these different races and all this magical stuff. I just like it when, you know, it's just kind of accepted, but it would still be considered weird by like the majority of society. It's not a normalized thing. It's only normal in this town. I just really like that aspect of it. I liked the characters a lot. I liked the relationships a lot. It was just all around a very pleasant read. So I was happy to get into this one. My next read was The Midnight Lie by Marie R Rutkowski. I can never say her name. Rutkowski? Who's to say? This is about a girl named Niram who lives in this sort of, this society where she's like in the slums and they're on the outer side of this place. It's, I, is there a map? There is not a map. I don't know how to describe it. She's part of the city and she's in the slum part. And in the middle is where all the rich people live and there's stuff happening. This book was weird. There was no plot until there was only 100 pages left of the book. Imagine my confusion when that happened. There's like a twist at the end that I don't think was earned like at all, but I gotta say, the love story? The love story was hot and cute and everything that I wanted. Truly. <laughs> Niram's love interest is named Sid and Sid is literally the only thing that got me through this book. I'll say it. So it's just that prototypical cocky love interest that you get in a lot of these, but she's a girl and that makes it so much better. This is a sapphic book in case you didn't already know. The relationship is so perfect. And I saw the author say on Twitter that Sid, I was not planning because there's going to be a sequel to this. I was not planning on reading the sequel, but the author said that Sid was going to have her own point of view in the next book. And... I might have to read it. <laughs> if Sid gets her own point of view, I might have to read it. So this was good. Like this was an enjoyable read. I just didn't know what was going on. And like there was no plot. I don't care about plot. I feel like I've said it a bunch. So this was fine for me. But if you care a lot about plot, this may not be the one. And now we are moving on to the only two star that I gave the lowest rated book of this month. And that is... The Last Voyage of Pope Live, and it breaks my heart because look at how beautiful that cover is. This was 100% a cover by, I'm not even gonna lie to you. So this is about a girl named Poe Blythe who is part of this, I don't understand what this book was. I cannot tell you what genre, maybe sci-fi, probably sci-fi. I tuned out towards the end, so it could be something else. This was so boring. If you like action, this is the book for you because that's all it was to me. None of the characters had any depth. None of them were interesting. None of the relationships were interesting. You may notice that I haven't told you what this book is about and that's because I don't really know. This girl wants revenge and she's like a ship captain, also an engineer, and it's about her journey to a mining outpost? I don't know. I truly cannot tell you. All I know is I didn't enjoy it. It was just not my type of thing. Like it was very action plot heavy. Not for me. Not a plot person at all. So mm -hmm, this one wasn't it. Sorry. So the last book that I want to talk about, I don't rate nonfiction books. So that is why this one is last. I don't feel like I have a system to rate nonfiction books and I don't really know how to do it or develop it. So I just kind of said my thoughts in the Goodreads review, but it is Hood Feminism by Mickey Kendall. This book probably took me the longest to read out of any book that I've read in the past like five years. It's because they're like separate essays and I really wanted to like take my time so I wasn't just rushing through it in a sort of active performative reading. Um, I really wanted to digest the information so I tried to take it take it slower and boy it was worth it. This is a really good book. I feel like this book is a really good starting point for intersectional feminism though it kind of focuses obviously on black womanhood and what it means to be black especially in this country it also focuses on other marginalized people it doesn't really go in depth which makes sense based on some of the stuff that mickey kendall said in here but i do think that this is a really good place to start with intersectional feminism and i think it's a good supplementary read even if you're already well read on the topic because uh, i consider myself fairly 
well read on intersectional feminism. Mickey Kendall definitely told me a lot of stuff that I didn't know and I love that. In case you were wondering, my favorite essays from this were Hunger, The Fetishization of Fierce, the one about race and politics, and Fear and Feminism? Fear and Feminism, I was right. So yes, overall, very good book. I think that some of the essays kind of went off track, but I understand how that's very easy to do when you're talking about feminism because there's just a lot of content to cover when you're talking about feminism, so. I understand. Those are all the books that I read in the month of June. I have plans for July. I don't know if they're gonna get done because you guys, to be honest, I'm really not feeling it lately. Uh, if you can be so shocked considering the state of the world. I will definitely have some videos up this month. I just might miss a week or two. So thank you guys so much for joining me. Let me know what you guys read, what your favorite book of the month was. If you had a book that you absolutely hated, let me know. I would love to hear about it. Until next time, my friends, have a wonderful day. Bye! When you say you won't forget me, I can tell you that's untrue. Every day since you left me, I thought less.